to just give a little bit of background, we had a chip and we decided, since we couldn't figure out what else to do with this darn chip, to build this camera. And we had heard that if you could build a little security camera that ran on AA batteries, these are just standard AA lithium batteries, and have it last for six months or more, you'd have a pretty interesting product. And um, we, this sort of the idea for this came about in late 2013, early 2014. We had no money, so we did what everybody else does when they don't have money. You put it up on Kickstarter and see what happens. And literally, I think we probably, these pictures are probably from Kickstarter. The, the thing on the right is, you know, just a mock-up. The thing on the left has nothing inside of it. It's all fake. But we put this up on Kickstarter and we raised over a million dollars. We had a $200,000 goal, which we thought was ludicrous. We was like, no way. Are we going to get $200,000? We cleared that in the first day. And we're like, wait a second, there's something going on here. Um, the second thing that was you know, really interesting about Kickstarter is we kind of assumed it was all a bunch of really early adopters, you know, all sort of gadget people, and what we found out it wasn't. There were just sort of you know, regular people trolling on Kickstarter, giving us a lot of feedback, saying this actually solves a lot of problems for me, because when I'm not home, I got all these things that I'm worried about. Where are my kids? What are my dog doing? Uh, classic one is, did my Amazon package get delivered? And then 20 minutes later, did my Amazon package get stolen? And this thing could answer those questions very easy. I can, on the phone, I can turn the camera on. The camera has a little passive infrared detector in that little dome there, mm -hmm. and it will detect motion. And the camera's just basically sitting there, typically doing absolutely nothing. It will actually last 10 years on a couple of batteries in the do-nothing mode. Yeah, so what's that thing? Yes. All right, so this thing on the bottom. So the, the thing that's very different about this camera is even though we jump on Wi-Fi to send audio and video, the camera itself is not on Wi-Fi when it's not doing anything. So we're not basically using power, sitting there idly, keeping a Wi-Fi connection alive. The box on the bottom is called, is a sync, we call it a sync module, it's a hub. It plugs in and it's, per, it's uh, got a persistent connection on your home Wi-Fi and up to the cloud. So if I go to my app and want to turn the camera on, I'm actually talking to the sync module, mm -hmm. and it's using a sub gigahertz, very, very low power radio technology that actually causes the camera to wake up. The camera jumps on Wi-Fi, starts recording audio and video. And that's really sort of the interesting technology hack that we came up with, which was what gives us the long battery life. Yeah, that's cool. that's cool. All right, so we built that first thing. Uh, which sells for $99. I think originally we sold it for $79. Uh, we still were making money on it. But every single person who bought the original white camera said, I really want an outdoor camera. And we're like, why do people want to put cameras outdoors? We thought you wanted to protect the inside of your house. And as you think about this a little bit, you realize for a lot of people, once someone comes into your house that shouldn't be there, doesn't really matter what else happens after that. You kind of feel like, hey, my house has been, you know, my, my privacy has been violated. The other thing is, is that all the other cameras, even if they were weatherproof, required you to plug in and who has plugs sitting around outside their house. So it all of a sudden it dawned on us. So we built this thing, which is a waterproofed camera. The other thing that it does is for, at night, it actually uses infrared illumination and then we actually uh, change, there's a thing called a shutter in the camera. We pull the shutter out of the way so the infrared light can hit the, the video sensor during the daytime. You don't want that to happen. Um, and the reason why people wanted the infrared is they didn't want, any, didn't want you to know you were being filmed. And then what happened was in the original camera we used a white LED like you have on your phone for the flash and people hated that. The other thing we had on the original cameras, whenever we were recording, day or night, we had a little blue LED so that you would know you were being recorded. And everybody hated that too. And we're like, wait a second, we don't really understand what these cameras are being used for. Maybe we don't want to know what they're being used for. But the most watched YouTube video about Blink is how to actually take a drill and drill out the blue LED on the white camera. <laughs> so this one actually has a switch in the back where you can either turn the LED on or not. Uh, just another early rendering. Um, so this is sort of front facing and as you can see what we did is we actually tried to recess the lens so it doesn't look quite so much like a camera. 
We actually had a, this time we actually hired an industrial designer to do the design work. Um, and uh, this does unfortunately add to some of the costs. The weatherproofing was about a 10% adder to the cost of goods. And the infrared illuminators are actually a little bit expensive as well. Uh, I don't know what that's from. Well, that's, that's a small camera, isn't it? Oh, it is small, yeah. I mean, they, these are basically two inches by two inches, something like that. Um, and the bulk of the volume is actually the batteries themselves. That's, a, that's an infrared night mode shot. Okay. So I don't know where you got that from, but so this would be on the XT camera uh, that we came out with last year. What we've done is we've introduced essentially one new product a year. So we uh, introduced the white camera in 2016, the outdoor camera in 2017, and we announced at CES this year a doorbell camera. And one quick thing, because we're designing the chip, we're actually doing all the engineering in-house, chip design, board design, mechanical engineering, uh, firmware, cloud, and mobile app development with a team of 20 people. Our cost of goods is much, much lower than anybody else in the industry. So our cameras are actually about half the price of the other camera guys. And we have what's known as gross margins. So if you look at our cost of goods relative to the price we sell, we have about 50% gross margin. So our cost of goods is about half what we sell it for. Everybody else in the industry is actually break even. And so we are half the price and profitable. And that's always a good place to be. I have no idea what that is. Someone built a little uh, thing to mount it in a tree. Yeah. So I guess uh, if you have a Wi-Fi extender and your signal is strong outside, yeah. then you can do that. Yep. Okay. What, what about with low temperatures? And, you know, they're, temperatures? So they're lithium batteries, and so a lithium battery is not as affected as much by either either temperature extreme. Okay. So we see very little roll off. We rate the thing to I think you know minus five degrees Fahrenheit, but there's plenty of people that are running them you know on much colder temperatures. Okay. 